team here at the University of Chicago in Hyde Park. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our webinar, Going Beyond Networking Coffees, 3.5 Tips to Turbocharge Your Networking Skills. Today's speakers are Amy Gardner and Keith Sabril, who are partners in life and business. They are leaving on Sunday for an around the world trip where they will be working independently for the next in, independently for the next 10 weeks, coaching, consulting, and working from multiple countries. They can share more about their business um, with you themselves as I hand the controls over to them. Wow, okay, that sounds uh, nervous, nerve wracking. I don't know, I don't know if I'm ready for that. How about you, Amy? Yikes. Um, well, I'll go ahead and, and get going on the presentation. Um, obviously, going beyond networking coffee, three and a half tips to turbocharge your networking skills. Um, I'll give just a little bit of background on, on each of us. Amy, actually, why don't you give uh, background on yourself there? Sure. Um, my name is Amy Gardner. I graduated from the law school in 2002. I was an associate at a big law firm and then a partner at a mid-sized law firm. And then I was the dean of students at the U of C Law School, where um, I learned a lot about professionalism and leadership development among law students based on what I had seen in practice and what um, areas that I thought students could use help with. So from the law school, I actually got my, um, after law working at the law school, I got my coaching certification and uh, began coaching mainly attorneys on career and career transition issues, and also doing consulting primarily for law firms, putting together trainings um, on professionalism and leadership skills and other topics. So, um, and now work full-time um, with Epichromatic. So. Keith, do you wanna introduce okay. yourself? Sure, that turns it back to me. So I am a recovering uh, city manager and I worked in municipal government for almost 20 years before um, becoming a certified coach. Uh, worked with uh, the city management coaching program uh, prior to becoming a certified coach myself and started with Apple Chromatic, uh, our, our firm full-time in March. So I work primarily with folks who are working on career transitions and uh, career fulfillment issues. And, and concerns. So um, we do that. We also do uh, consulting for uh, businesses and law firms uh, and a multitude of trainings and, and uh, everything from human resources issues to uh, performance reviews, uh, you name it, uh, we've uh, worked on, on those issues. So um, I'm also a photographer, so I'm, depart I'm taking off on this trip with Amy, and we're going to go around the world here in the next uh, 10 weeks and uh, do some uh, photography as well. So that's uh, our background. And I think that that actually is a good uh, segue into uh, what we're going to start off talking about. Um, Apple Chromatic is our business, and it's interesting that in, in this particular coaching and consulting firm, um, it's a it's a good reminder when you're starting off a firm brand new, and, and we started this within the last year and a half, that everyone that you come into contact with is your network. And uh, certainly we have expanded our networks greatly over the last couple of years in the process of, of starting this firm and, and working with clients all over uh, the world. But uh, in the meantime, this is about you and your networking. And so we want to get a sense from the people who are on on this webinar what the what their background is. So if you could answer this poll in the webinar, how many focused, intentional, and results-driven networking conversations do you have or conduct per week? And if you go try to go to you know one networking event per week or something, you can definitely count that and the conversations you might have there. Um, and we also just want to flag that there are some people who have a plan that I'm going to go to a certain number of events or have a certain number of conversations a week. Um, that's great if you have that. And if you don't, that's completely fine too. Um, you're in the right place because we're going to be covering some networking basics. And the whole idea is to get you to the point um, where you're having 
more um, focused, intentional, and results-driven networking conversations. So whatever your answer is, is great. All right, and it looks like for about a third of the attendees, the answer is none right now. Um, so great, hopefully you'll pick up some good tips and can ratchet that number up. Um, about a third are at one, and then a third are at uh, uh, two to four, um, and just a handful at a little at more than that. So everybody's in the right place, and we'll definitely um, give you some tips to uh, feel comfortable improving that number, increasing that number. You want to go to the second one? Okay, well, I think that um, that's interesting that uh, a third of the folks are not uh, are not working on networking. That's good. Uh, you're in the right place. Um, now, do you feel like you're getting the results? So those of you who are doing networking, do you feel like you're getting the results and that you're seeking with your current efforts? And again, there's no right answer here. We just want to get a baseline and understand where everybody's coming from. That's interesting. Uh, most of the folks on this webinar don't feel like you're getting the results that you feel like you should be getting. And that makes sense. That's why you're on this webinar. And 25% uh, of you feel like you're doing pretty good with it. That's good too. So. so Let's go ahead and get into kind of the, the meat of this. I, I think that gives us an overview. And I think that's really representative um, of people in general. Um, I think that people want to network and they want to work really hard at it, but they don't always get the results and it doesn't always seem genuine and authentic. And I think that if you don't have genuine and authentic as part of your networking vocabulary, it often seems forced and uncomfortable. And that's exactly the part of networking people don't like. So we'll move now to a few resources that you can go to. So you don't have to, you know, you can eat your lunch and not uh, have to frantically write down everything Amy's about to say, because uh, these resources are out there on our blog and our website um, at apochromatic.com. And specifically these three resources um, are good a, a good foundational practice for you to to um, do over the next few weeks. Um, the the goal of the first series, the four part series, there is really to just take 15, 20 minutes uh, a week and uh, build your network. And so it's four articles. They're all uh, there on our blog, and it just takes you through step by step a process to to build your network. Then. There are uh, two more articles on our blog, one, uh, three common networking mistakes, and the other, uh, how to deal with holiday parties and, and networking in, in, in a social setting. And of course, that's applicable. I think the graphic on the blog actually is kind of Christmassy, but um, I think that um, it's applicable now as we approach 4th of July and summer and uh, pool parties and all kinds of office picnics. So um, do take advantage of these. These three uh, relatively long links will be available at uh, our blog on apochromatic.com uh, afterwards, so you don't even need to write these down uh, here. So, what is your network? I think that uh, you really need to think big picture about um, what your what your network is. We see folks who look only professionally, they're an attorney, so they network with attorneys. And the, the point of this graphic is to point out that between Amy and myself, we have all these organizations that we belong to or have worked for or participate in. And there's, there's ones beyond what are represented here. There's your faith communities, there's, there's uh, neighborhood groups, there's sports teams and sports affiliations. Um, and there's groups with your children, if you have children, and all of those different pieces of your life really make up your network. And so you have to think very, uh, very completely about how you're creating your network. And so this is just a little representation of making sure that you uh, really 
get in all the nooks and crannies of your life and make sure that you're looking at how to expand the network because you never know when the next uh, specific person or or um, connection is going to be made. The, the question we were having when we started talking about this webinar was, is networking easier now or more difficult now than it used to be? And in, in 2018, it's as easy as, you know, going on LinkedIn and connecting to somebody. But what I say here is social media has made networking impersonal. And clicking, liking, and giving a thumbs up really don't carry the interpersonal results of meeting, shaking a hand, or sharing an experience. So while we're far more easy now to maintain our network through a like or a message on LinkedIn or congratulating someone on their job anniversary, which if you log into LinkedIn, you know happens almost every day, it's really creating that network that's still an old fashioned process that requires social interaction, professional behaviors and work. And so what we're gonna talk about today is really that creation of the network, not the maintenance of it. But certainly with social media, um, we've moved into a, a, a day and age where maintaining the network is far easier than it used to be. So I'm going to mute myself and turn it over to Amy to talk about uh, some of the networking 101 information. Thanks. So I'm going to talk about some basic uh, tips with how to build your network. And then specifically, if you're doing a networking coffee or a lunch or other one-on-one um, -on -one meeting, talk a little bit about how to do that. And then Keith and I are gonna do a demonstration of a networking coffee. So um, first of all, in terms of building your network, I think it's really important to keep in mind why you're building your network. So hopefully the reason is that you want to expand the number of people you know within your industry or your field, um, but it might be that you wanna build your network because you wanna look for that next job. Whatever the reason is, um, keeping that in mind is uh, important so that you can maintain your focus. Um, Keith already talked about uh, thinking broadly about who makes up your network, um, but it's such an important point. I wanted to mention it again, thinking about things like affiliations, um, connections you already have, current and former colleagues. Um, you may have noticed on that last graphic, uh, we had the Noah's Ark logo. I worked for Noah's Ark Water Park when I was in high school and college. And um, because of a blog post I wrote about what I learned from that summer job, recently got reconnected with some other Noah's Ark alumni, one of whom is um, looks like hiring our, us to come in and do some trainings for his employees. So don't, uh, don't forget those jobs you may have had in high school or college. Uh, again, faith community and avocational activities. So um, things like I take Spanish lessons and um, have met other people through that. So even though it's not a professional, um, I, I didn't go into it hoping to expand my network. It wasn't my goal and I didn't, I'm not learning Spanish for professional reasons. Um, I have um, made some good connections through that. Um, another thing that you wanna think about as you're beginning to build your network is making sure that your social media LinkedIn in particular, but also Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, that those profiles are up to date and that they're polished. So I've seen this several times where people have reached out to me and um, you know, through LinkedIn, it looks very um, professional and uh, all those things that, you know, that they're thinking about. And then you look at their Facebook um, picture. And in one instance, uh, the person who reached out to me was doing a keg stand in his Facebook profile picture. So, um, you want to make sure that all of those profiles are up to date. Um, and I should also say that uh, when we're giving examples, these are all examples of mistakes that we have made or that we've seen other people make. Um, there's definitely no judgment here. I think I've made just about every networking mistake there is. And I'm always looking for new ones that I can make, it looks like. So um, just want to help you kind of avoid some of those. Except for the keg stand, that probably wasn't a mistake you made. <laughs> no. Nope, <laughs> no. All right, you want to go to the next one, Keith? Uh, all right. Mm, nope. You got it. No. There we go. All right, uh, so again, looking at why you're building your network, um, thinking about your long-term goal, and then what specific goal you're going to leverage your network for. Um, thinking about 
who makes up your current network. So um, when you're thinking about where you want to expand your network or who you want to reach out to, think about people that you can meet who don't um, already overlap with your own network. So um, I talked about this more in depth in a blog post um, that Keith referenced, but the idea is that if you get to know um, people with whom you have a lot in common, so um, for example, if you spend time deepening your connection to current work colleagues, that can be really helpful, but it can be even more helpful to invest the same amount of time in getting to know people that you don't have as many overlaps with, because that's going to um, expand your sphere um, as well. So thinking about that, it's sort of counterintuitive, but it can really um, result in um, better, uh, better outcomes in terms of expanding your network and your reach. Um, then in terms of some very specific steps and actionable things that you can do, we recommend that you think about make a list of 10 people that you want to reach out to. And the reason we say 10 is because 20 is overwhelming um, and five, you know, four of them may be on vacation in July and August when you're most focused on building your network at this point. So come up with a list of 10 people that you want to reach out to and get to know. Um, and then uh, you can follow these steps, steps with those folks. Uh, all right, I clicked it through, so supposed to be seeing it. There's a little uh, bit of lag, I think, between. So. All right. Um, so, in in terms of acting on uh, reaching out to people on your list, um, one of the things that again we're talking about coffees, but the same advice applies, and I really encourage you to to figure out how you can make your networking authentic and comfortable. So, um, and so you're going to have a much better uh, conversation. So, um. For example, you want to think about what what type of interaction do you want to have with a particular person. I recently met a woman who is on the board of an organization that encourages girls to run. And um, just from talking with her at coffee, uh, she learned that I like to run and um, invited me to a dinner for the organization that she's involved with. And so that was um, um, an interaction that ended up being something that tied into both of our interests in a way that if we had just had coffee again, it wouldn't have given us that, that time together and, and reaffirmed both of our interests. So think about maybe um, there's someone that uh, you want to get to know who um, really is into working out and, so, and you both belong to the same gym, so maybe you want to go work out together. Or um, maybe they really like new restaurants, and so you might invite them to lunch. Or I know one attorney who has opera season tickets, and so he often likes to take people to the opera with their spouses as a way of getting to know them better and um, satisfying an interest that he and, and the person he's networking with um, both have. So think about that. Um, so I hope that that's helpful. Now we're going to turn to some uh, do's and don'ts for an actual networking meeting. All right, so some mistakes you can avoid. And again, these are not offered as a way of, you know, for with any judgment associated, it's just things that we've all uh, done and that you want to avoid. So one is to ignore your network until you're looking for a job. And it's so easy to do that because you get caught up in your day-to-day -day work and building a network just doesn't become part of your routine. But that's why we encourage you to think about maybe making it a goal to attend two networking events or have coffee with two different people each month, have some sort of structure and goal so that when you get to the point where you might be looking for another job or you're wanting to grow your client base, um, if you're in a, a position where you need to um, secure clients, whatever it is, um, you're not starting from scratch. Another um, mistake that I know I'm guilty of sometimes is failing to follow up um, on your efforts. I had a coffee a few months ago with um, a, a woman who was interested in a job with one of the organizations that I'm on the board for. And um, she had some specific asks that she made of me. And she actually said specifically, uh, oh, you don't, I, I went to write it down, the people she wanted me to reach out to and said, oh, you don't need to write it down, I'll follow up with you. And she never did. And so of course, I didn't reach out to those people on her behalf because partially, I didn't think about it a lot after that. And also because I thought, well, if she's not gonna send me an email, is she really gonna follow up with people that I introduce her to? 
So you want to make sure that you um, maybe put it in your calendar when you schedule a networking coffee or meeting, put it in your calendar for the next morning to um, follow up with um, any you know, thank you note or follow up points, anything that you have promised to do. Um, and in particular, if you're going to a networking event, it can be helpful to schedule time that next morning uh, if it's an evening event. And then finally, another mistake to avoid is so often people consider networking a one-way street. And I think that that's especially true when you're more junior in your career or making a career jump and you're meeting with people who are more senior. Um, it, and it, it's not true that you have nothing to offer uh, the other person. And so you wanna think about what it is that you can offer them. So for example, it might be that you, when you're having coffee with them, um, they tell you about a project they're working on and um, you, know of an article that is relevant to that. So you wanna go back to your office, find that article and email it to them with a thank you note. And that's some way that you can add, a way you can add value. Or it might be that you can introduce them to someone that you know. And that again gets back to thinking about your network broadly and thinking about people that you know who um, may not be the first people that come to mind as people that you're closest to. But um, so considering, uh, net, remembering that networking is a two-way street is really important to do. Um, as part of your networking efforts. And I think it's really important too to, to bring back into your mind again that it is something that needs to be authentic. Um, you know, it is a two-way street, both you and the person you're networking with have something that benefit each other. And whether it's your career or whether it's an avocation, whether it's um, you know, just something you're reaching out to somebody because you want to learn more about it, uh, it isn't a phony or um, or or odd interaction to want to have. So I think we've all seen, you know, the the stereotypical handing out the business card and saying, "Hi, my name's Keith," and you you really want to avoid that because you know that person is networking certainly, but leaving an impression of um, just almost insincerity in in the process and that business card that's handed out in that way isn't isn't going to the top of the stack and isn't going to be remembered in a way that something as thoughtful as a thank you note or an article on a topic or some sort of genuine interaction uh will have do you, do you agree amy definitely 100 percent. yeah and i think that that stereotypical image of the how you doing and the business card kind of thing that's exactly why people don't want to focus on networking and they don't realize that they already have a network and they've already been doing networking because they think oh i don't do that kind of thing i'm not you know working the room at every cocktail hour i go to um but yeah definitely the most more authentic ties are more helpful anyway and working the room in that manner and doing networking in that way is uncomfortable and it seems uncomfortable and i think that is why people shy away from it and, and why there's a little bit of a uh, hesitation when you bring up networking because you get that stereotypical image in your head so what, what, we're, yeah. what we're presenting here is something completely different for sure so let's talk about some specific steps to a successful networking meeting and some of these um, may seem basic and review, but all of these are things that we've seen come up with people that one or both of us have had coffee with in the last probably six months to a year. So um, again, the, the, it doesn't necessarily have to be coffee, uh, whatever you're comfortable with and think is relevant to the interests of the person you're meeting with and, and your interests. Um, once you've reached out to someone, so maybe you have been referred by someone else, or maybe you already know this person and wanna to get to know them better, so you reach out to them and ask if they might be willing to have coffee sometime. They say yes, then you get into the logistics back and forth. And it's so important as the person who's making the invitation or the ask to minimize that back and forth because you don't want the person you're meeting with to think that you're high maintenance or this is too complicated um, from the get-go. So um, ask when is convenient for them and suggest a place near their office. Um, I often get contacted by um, former law students who want to talk to get advice or my former students who are still in law school or whatever. And they will suggest a place that is you know, in Wicker Park and in Chicago, which is, you know, a solid 20 minutes from the downtown area where our office is and where um, 
most of the uh, most of the employers are. So um, make, completely outside of your radius. <laughs> completely outside of my radius. So like, make pick something that's convenient for them and close to their office. Just look on Google Maps and you know, figure out a place that's close to suggest. Um, another thing that I've seen and this is recent. I've never. I don't remember seeing this before. Is um, several people I've met with recently who have asked me to coffee um, show up at say Starbucks and they bring their own water bottle and don't get something to drink, um, which is a little weird. Um, and so if you get there first, you want to be there on time. You probably want to be there a little early so you can scope out a good table. Don't go through the order line um, on your own unless they've beat you there and I've already done that. Um, Cause then it just seems like, wait, you invited me to coffee. You're sitting there drinking your water. I'm in line by myself for 10 minutes, uh, depending on the Starbucks. So meet them, get something to drink, offer to pay um, because they're doing you a favor having coffee, unless it's a situation where we both wanted to get together. Um, and you know, if they offer to pay, great, but you should offer. And then um, you wanna sit it down, uh, preferably in a, a quieter area if you can. Um, and you want to start with some small talk of getting to know the person a little better before you go directly into professional things. Um, we have some posts on our blog about how to make small talk, but just in general, you know, e easy, basic things of how's your summer going? Um, how's your day been so far? Just those sorts of human things so you don't get right into, you know, this is the reason I called you here today. Um, you want to also reference the person who referred you to them if you've been referred. So you might ask, oh, so-and-so suggested that I reach out to you. How do you know so-and-so? Um, things like that. Then you want to also introduce yourself so that um, they understand where you're coming from. So you might, you might talk about um, what they do first, or you might talk about yourself a little bit. You just want to make sure you don't talk about yourself too much. So you might say something like, um, so I've been uh, in the workforce now working at XYZ in the Y department for three years, and I'm starting to think about next steps. And um, I saw that you have been in this other position for this long and would love to hear more about how you ended up in that field. Just something like that. So you've introduced, given some knowledge, information about yourself so that they kind of know where you're coming from and then you shift into asking them questions. You want to be careful when you're asking the questions that it doesn't feel like um, you're taking a deposition or, or um, that you know you're reenacting uh, an interrogation from Law and Order. Um, but you do want to come prepared with some questions. So I usually recommend that you don't have a list of questions in front of you, but you might have a list that you refer to in the notebook on your phone um, just before a coffee. And then think about how you might want to write some notes down. So. Is that you want to have a piece of paper and a pen with you? Um, I usually don't recommend that people take notes in their phone because it looks like you're texting or updating Twitter or something. So um, even though, of course, you wouldn't be, um, I usually recommend that you use a, a pen and paper if you do want to take any notes or just jot notes down right afterwards so you know what to follow up with them about. You also want to uh, um, make sure that you keep an eye on the time because you're meeting with busy people. Uh, you, you don't want to um, make them feel like you're um, taking too much of their time. And you want to make sure that you get the questions asked that you want to um, ask. So what I like to do is I'll set a, um, a calendar reminder that will then buzz on my Fitbit um, so that that kind of lets me know, oh, wait, I should be wrapping this up or getting the question out that I want to make sure I, I get. So the ask might be, um, who else do you think I should meet? or do you have any suggestions for specific uh, trainings that have been helpful in your career that I should look into so that I can advance in mine um, if you're in the same field? Or it might be, so what would your advice be to someone just starting out in this field? Um, or do you know anybody who is, I, I am applying for this position, do you know anybody who is in that um, office that I should speak to with? Whatever your ask is, you wanna make sure you get that in and not feel rushed. And then um, when you get to the closing, there you just want to reiterate your gratitude for them taking the time, um, remind any next steps if they promise they're gonna reach out to someone um, on your behalf, whatever it is, and um, make sure that it's clear that you, you appreciate their time and effort. 
Um, so I hope that that makes sense uh, in terms of just some steps that you want to have in the back of your head. Um, and now Keith and I are going to do a demo of how to do a networking coffee. Um, obviously, this is not 100% realistic because we know each other a smidge. Um, but the idea was uh, that it might be helpful for people to see some of this in action. So uh, it's, it's undoubtedly it's undoubtedly going to be a little bit weird because there's a little bit of a, a web uh, connection lag, but um, let's let's go ahead and try it and see what happens. And we're we're doing okay on time, so we can spend about five or six minutes on this. So I guess the scenario in the setup is that I am a person that you have um, and suggested you to meet with me, right? Right. And so Keith is the person that I'm trying to network in. Um, I'm trying to network and he's the important person. So, um, all right, well, first of all, I, I just wanna thank you for making the time to meet with me today. Um, Ron Miller suggested that I talk with you about uh, coaching and consulting because it's a path that I've considered going down and I know that you've um, recently gone full-time on your own company. So I, I just would love to hear um, how that all came about. That's excellent. Ron's a great guy, isn't he? Yeah, he is. So, yeah, I, you know, I, I had spent a lot of time in, in municipal government and thought that that's where I was, uh, that's where I was going to end my career. But uh, once I got involved in coaching, I really found something completely different. And uh, this coaching and consulting firm has been uh, really really started to take off so what, what specifically are you interested in so i think uh i specifically really like the uh, the counseling aspect of my current job and working with people and helping them achieve their goals and so that that was appealing to me um have you have you found that to be the case have you gotten that I imagine that you get a lot of um, enjoyment and fulfillment out of helping people achieve their goals. Has, has that been the case or have there been drawbacks that you've run into? It is good. I mean, that, that's actually one of the reasons that I uh, kind of chose this path is that I, I think sometimes, uh, particularly in management, you end up working on a lot of the problems that exist. And with coaching and consulting, I get to help people solve problems, but also help people who are really trying to uh, make change and have fulfillment in their career. So that's been really rewarding. And I would really encourage you to, to consider that. Um, you know, I, I have several people that I know that, that have gone through uh, different coaching certifications and there's, there's several of them around the country um, uh, associated with universities, associated with coaching schools themselves, and I'd be happy to put you in touch with a few people that that I talked to when I was considering which uh, which path to take. Oh, that's great. I mean, I of course prepared before I met you and and um, reviewed your LinkedIn profile, and and um, I know you have quite an interesting background. Is there a particular um, next step that you would recommend that I take, um, or specific? training that I might pursue that you found especially helpful? I mean, you mentioned obviously coaching training. Is there anything else that I should be doing? Well, I think that, um, I think that you're doing the right thing by, by talking to folks and, and, and getting a sense for this and, and building a good foundation. But um, I have a friend named Craig that I think that you would uh, really benefit from talking to. And if you want, I can send him an email uh, and CC you on it and kind of introduce you by email, uh, you know, later today, if that would help. And um, he's a really inspirational guy. And I think, uh, I think he would um, give you some good direction on, on career, career advice as well. It's all about making more connections, right? Right. That's so what, that's have, what have you, what have you been doing the last uh, year or so since, um, since you started looking at this? I mean, what steps have you taken? Um, so I uh, certainly started talking to other coaches and um, people who are in this field um, and really focused on making sure that it's the right fit for my skills and my, my strengths. And so as part of that, have started um, reading, um, reading a lot. Um, 
I, I'm sure that uh, you've probably uh, probably spent a lot of time on professional development and personal development, um, but I have as well. And, and I want to make sure that I'm making the right um, next step in my career. I don't want to slide into something and, and find that it's not the right fit. So I've been really trying to be introspective um, and think about where I can make a difference and where I can be most fulfilled. Great. So I'm actually taking off um, on a trip here uh, for about 10 weeks. And uh, I've got appointments set up with And it's going to be a really interesting, really interesting topic. I, I would really like it if you'd follow along on, on uh, my web. website red dot blue dot and um, also uh, connecting me with his friend Craig so there we go yes except we can't hear you all right, so um, I hope that that was helpful. We obviously didn't prepare any of that because we wanted it to be um, a natural conversation. Um, and that brought up an, a point um, that brought up a point that I had um, forgotten to mention earlier in terms of your preparing and thinking about who you're meeting with. You want to make sure that you've reviewed their LinkedIn profile, um, Google them to see if there's been any new news stories that they've been in recently. Make sure that you're familiar um, with the person you're meeting with in advance. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. So I think the one thing, it's really tough when you have a made up scenario, but I think it's really important to, and I've said this twice already, I'll say it a third time just to emphasize this, be authentic. Um, you have a genuine interest in this person you're meeting with. Uh, you have uh, a, a benefit from it and they maybe have a genuine interest in you as well. And this varies a lot based on whether it's a mentor of yours or someone you know, um, you know, relatively well, or whether it's someone that was referred uh, referred to you by someone else. So um, play that kind of by ear, but also um, be genuine in your in your discussion. It doesn't have to be in any way uncomfortable. So um, I'll slide right into the next uh, screen if that's okay. okay. So the next step as we put it is reach your networking goals execute your plan and, and this goes back to uh, maybe some some items that we haven't covered in depth today because we have a short period of time but certainly that you can read online and and do this for yourself and do this for your own benefit uh, make and execute a plan of uh, how many contacts you want to make how you want to build a network and how you want to professionally advance yourself um, and then reassess that plan at a regular interval and, and figure out uh, what worked and what didn't work and and uh, and tweak it from there. Does, Amy, do you agree that's a good way to go about this? Absolutely. I would say um, remember that uh, you're there are lots of things in life where you're going for perfection and this really isn't one of them. Um, if you do 80% of what you hope that you'll do, you'll be far ahead of where you are um, if you, you don't put the time and effort into trying to expand your network. Okay, so there's one more thing. I like to do one more thing. Uh, it was three and a half steps, and Rachel was very interested in knowing what the what the half step was going to be or the half tip was going to be. And I decided it was just clickbait to make the title more interesting. That really isn't true. That isn't it. That was to make everyone laugh. That was supposed to be funny. Um, Amy didn't even crack a smile with that. But um, this is really the half half point um, never underestimate any person in your life you may think they don't have a connection or they don't know anything about whatever topic it is you're looking for or even that they're not at the same level as you are academically professionally financially economically 
but the number of people who are simply a few degrees from you and directly involved in the field that you're interested in or the issue that you're interested in is amazing. And LinkedIn has really proved that reality uh, just from uh, the, the number of connections you can get and uh, the degrees away from where you are. So don't ever underestimate the small 0.5 relationships in your life. Um, they may be your next client, your next connection, or your next biggest cheerleader. So just keep that in mind and make sure that you're always cultivating your network in a positive way. Amy, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I mean, I would just add that, um, just to reaffirm that, I can't tell you how many times um, I have ended up getting really helpful information or advice from someone that I didn't know particularly well. Um, just last night, um, the door, the security guard at a building that I go to, the building I go to for Spanish class, actually, um, I told him I was wouldn't see him for a couple months because we were going to be doing this trip. And he actually has spent a lot of time in one of the countries we're visiting and gave me some great advice. Um, and lots of other times in my life where uh, people that I've known tangentially have been really helpful to my career um, and just my own personal growth and development. So I encourage you to not um, to not underestimate folks you may have a more casual connection with. Yeah, we seem to live in a world where um, interpersonal communication is becoming less and less and people are watching their phones and, and, and not having real positive interactions. And, and so take that, take that 0.5 relationship and really make it into something. So with that, um, we're at our last slide, the question slide. And I think that uh, Rachel probably has some questions that have come in. If not, take in some questions right now if you have anything. And uh, we left about 15 minutes for uh, Q&A. Great. We do have we've had a couple questions about reaching someone through email. Is email a good way to connect with someone initially? And if so, are looking for tips on subject lines so that someone will open the email? Or what should you say in that email uh, if they're a cold contact? Sure. So, um, yeah, email is a good way to reach out to someone. I, I really recommend it over phone um, because email people can answer at their leisure versus phone can feel invasive um, in people's day. You don't know what else they're doing in the middle of their day when you um, call them. So um, we we'll reach out by email. Um, I If someone has referred you, so in our example um, where um, Ron Miller had referred me to Keith, you would maybe put in the subject line, um, friend of Ron Miller or um, referral from whatever. Um, I've seen a lot written about, you know, used to be people often said, um, I want to pick your brain. And that, there's a lot been written about why you shouldn't um, say that. Uh, I don't know that that's such a huge deal. Um, but maybe you could say, you know, fellow, if you're reaching out to a fellow U of C alum, fellow U of C alum could be the subject line. Um, you want to make sure that the email itself is short and to the point. Um, but also lets them know how you found them. So um, if it's a cold person or cold contact, you might say, um, I'm a current um, third year, uh, in my third year at the University of Chicago, and um, I'm looking for fellow alumni that I might be able to learn from about their careers or something like that. Um, looking for people who also went to the University of Chicago who are in the field of pharmaceutical sales, whatever it is. So you, you explain who you are, um, what you have in common with them, why you're emailing, and then say, I know you're very busy, but would be so grateful if you might have time to do a, if you might be able to make 20 minutes to have coffee with me um, and share more about your career. Whatever it is, make, that, make it clear that you're not asking for a day long um, meeting. Um, so basically, have a clear a subject line that catches their attention that doesn't screw around. Um, have content that refers to how what you have in common, how you're coming to meet them, um, and why you're interested in them particularly, and then what it is you're asking for. Um, and I also don't don't make it super open ended. So um, I've seen both both ends of the spectrum. So people will email and say, "Do you have time next Thursday to have coffee?" Well, maybe yes, maybe no. But if the answer is no, then we got to go back and forth about more. Um, or they say, I'd love to have coffee sometime. So instead, if you say something like, um, 
I'm going to be in New York City these four days and was wondering if you might have time to have coffee or um, I would love to have um, coffee if there's some time in July that you might be free. Something like that. That's a little more um, narrow. Another Can question. I add to that? I mean, I... Please, Keith. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I would add to that just really briefly. Just keep it short, but also if it's somebody that you're not really sure is, is going to um, respond to you or if it's uh, you know, a really significantly um, higher level person than maybe you are right now, you're, you're asking to talk to the CEO or something like that. Um, it never hurts to have a little bit of genuine flattery. I mean, to, to say I'm really interested in the work you're doing with this research or, or something like that to, um, to peak theory. Great, we have another question. What if I've already waited and now I'm looking for a new job and I need to reach out to my network? Okay, it is what it is, right? That's the situation and um, that's fine. Um, there are plenty of people in that situation. Um, so own it. I mean, you don't wanna email and say, Dear Sally, um, I haven't talked to you in two years um, and now hate my job and would like a new one. I'm hoping you can help. Um, instead, you wanna say, Dear Sally, I'm realizing it's been a long time since we caught up. Would love to get together for coffee and hear how things have been going for you. Um, that's fine. And then when you get together for coffee, again, don't start off with, oh, I need out, um, hoping you can help. Just start off with, how have things been going for you? Um, just a normal conversation and then you can work in yeah, you know, I've learned a lot over the last two years, but I'm now starting to think about my next move. And that's completely fine. People understand that. And I think career transition is something that, um, you know, is really becoming far more uh, accepted and far more understood. And so a lot of the clients that I work with are folks in career transition and, um, you know, it, there, there is no, there is no bad anymore, really, in saying, you know what, I'm I'm in between uh, jobs right now, and I'm looking to uh, find a really fulfilling step in my career uh, for my next step, for my next phase. So don't don't shy away from that. Like Amy said, own it, and um, you know, take the time you have as an opportunity to uh, really work with with building your network and, and seeing what opportunities are out there and make sure that you figure out make sure you take the time to figure out what it is that'll be a fulfilling career change for you and um kind of determine why it is you want to do that career change is it, it you know i tell people is it really that you don't like the career or is it that you don't like the specific situation or are you really interested in something completely different so Kind of keep your, your radar. I would just also add that if you're switching um, jobs and you're talking to people in that context, that it's especially important that you follow up with them once you land a new position. Um, that's something that people often skip because you've gotten the job and you put your head down, you want to do a good job at it. That's exactly when you should go back to everybody you met with in the process of finding that job, even if you did something completely different in a different city than what you talked to them about and just let them know where you landed. And that's a great opening then to maintain the network. So next time around, it's in better shape. What about, um, I got a couple questions here about, is it okay to reach out through LinkedIn to make connections with people you haven't met before? I think so. I mean, I, I would use LinkedIn um, professionally and sparingly. It can be kind of a cold um, interaction. I mean, it's certainly not as, as uh, friendly and warm as email or, or some of the other social media aspects. But I think from a professional standpoint, certainly you can, um, you can utilize that. I think that there's a really big variation as to how much people use LinkedIn. And so um, if you use it to reach out to somebody and you don't get an answer, um, don't take that as a rejection. Uh, try a different route because it may be that they really only check their LinkedIn profile, you know, very infrequently. So, 
Absolutely. I completely agree. I would just also add that um, with LinkedIn, I think it's even more important than with email, um, but both it, it's important in both situations to customize the email. I get a lot of messages through LinkedIn that um, are just a, a form message. And so you want to make sure that you use a salutation. So, you know, dear Amy, um, rather than just not having one. Um, and then again, the same as with an email, explaining how are we connected or um, what do we have in common? How did you find me? That sort of thing to make it more likely that people um, will read it and respond positively. And with, as Keith said, with, with LinkedIn, but also with email, if you don't get an answer right away or don't get an answer period, that don't take it as a personal rejection. You might be in a spam filter. They might not look, look at LinkedIn. They might, you know, be just at a point where they're not able to, um, to respond to anything. So don't take it personally and just keep going. How should you ask? I think that's good advice across the board. I think that's good advice across the board with any sort of electronic communication. I mean, I, I literally just last, uh, two weeks ago had an interaction with a woman I've worked with for years and years. And I thought we were going to work on a project together and I had emailed her twice about it and never heard back. And I was really kind of shocked and, um, and frankly, a little bit concerned. But I just kind of let it slide and figured, oh, I'm not really sure why she's not responding. Maybe I'll just let it go. And then, you know, out of the blue, a week, you know, several weeks later, three weeks later, probably, she said, "Oh, this fell below my, you know, inbox line or whatever." And and then I had a vacation and was out. And once it goes below a certain point, people miss it and forget that they ever had that email. So certainly um, have a little patience and a little bit of flexibility in how you respond to electronic communication. How should you ask someone to shadow them if they're already in your network? So someone you know, you want to shadow them at work. So that's really tricky. Um, I think it depends upon the line of work and if that's something that people are open to. So I would definitely um, have a conversation with them. So get coffee with them, get whatever with them. And um, then say, maybe say, you know, do you have other suggestions for how I could learn more about this position or more about this field? and see if they say that, if they offer that. Um, you also, unless, I mean, unless you're a college student, it's pretty rare that they would make that um, offer, but if it comes up, great. Another thing you could say is you could just, in the context of a conversation where you've asked how else you can learn about it, you can say, you know, is there any chance that, you know, I could attend a deposition with you or, you know, any chance for me to be able to see what this job is like in action? And again, see if they bring it up. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if they say no or if that's not an option. And keep in mind also that it, it will vary a lot depending on the type of profession it is. Um, whereas maybe one, uh, you know, professional may say, sure, come to the office with me for a day. You know, there's this one meeting that you can't attend because it's confidential, but otherwise you could be there. Um, maybe in a creative field. Uh, it's seen as almost a little more competitive or maybe there's, you know, some sort of sense of you want to take their job. So, I mean, there's a lot of sensitivities to that and there could be a lot of um, different flags raised when, when you ask that. So do it in, a, I think, do it in a, uh, a delicate way and say, listen, I, I really respect what you're doing and I really respect the kind of work it is. And I think it might be what I want to do someday, but I, I'd like to explore more. And maybe look at it more from learning more than necessarily um, putting them right away hard with a with a shadow request. What resources can I use to craft my list of ten people I want to reach out to? So um, one thing to do is to look at your LinkedIn profile and who your LinkedIn connections are. Another one is it depends on your goal. So if your goal is to um, get another job and you, there are some uh, organizations you're interested in working with. Organization. Um, another thing to do is think about um, who, where you wanna be in five years and who's already there and start reaching out to them. Um, but another thing to do is look at, kind of make an affiliation list like Keith had on that slide of um, who, you know, who you already know, um, who uh, you already have a connection with, and then 
who who you want to deepen those connections with. And it, it's fine to have a couple on there that are sort of the warm up ones. So maybe somebody that you shared an office with um, two years ago who you already know pretty well, but you haven't talked to in a while, and you feel like that's going to be an easier one as you get practice, reach out to that person first um, and then save the more senior people or the people that might seem like a bigger ask for you until later, until you've done a few of these. Yeah, I don't think you can emphasize that enough. Um, if you haven't been doing a lot of networking or you feel like you might be a little rusty, do a couple practice runs with easy folks that are, um, you know, people you talk to on a regular basis and, and just reach out to them. Definitely practice makes perfect in this case. That's great. Well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. We have about a minute left. Um, and I want to especially thank Amy and Keith for demonstrating how we could have a networking coffee and sharing those 3.5 tips, especially that last tip, which was not clickbait at all. I loved it. Um, we should all remember that everybody can be a resource to us. Thank you everyone for attending. You can join us again uh, in July. We'll have a panel of, web of alumni professionals on a webinar who will talk about leveraging your network for career success and how they've done it. And so you can learn tips and tricks of, so you can do it too. We're also gonna have a webinar on July 10th about alumni applying to national fellowships to fund research, international engagement, or graduate study. Uh, thank you for coming today. Take care and have a great rest of your day.